G'day. In this series of videos, we're going to combine a whole lot of different things from the other playlists into one experiment. We're going to use PsychoPy and Python and some other libraries, things like Pandas and Pi Audio, DateTime, Wave, to create and then conduct and then hopefully analyze a psychophysics experiment. Now, what's the experiment that we're going to do? Consider the following, just in your mind. You have headphones on, or you're out, and let's say you're wearing your headphones and you have your volume turned to zero. You can't hear the output of your amplifier. Now, what happens if you turn the volume up to maximum? So let's say your amplifier goes to 11, as all amplifiers should go to 11. So you go on up to maximum. You can definitely hear that sound, can't you? Let's assume you're otherwise healthy in your hearing um, faculties. So, at some point between zero on your amplifier to 100% on your amplifier, you're going to transition from not being able to hear it to being able to hear it. This point where you transition from not hearing it to hearing it, that's called your threshold. And it's a common thing to want to know, particularly in um, experiments on uh, sensation and perception, or even when I do my electrophysiology experiments, I want to know, well, how sensitive is this neuron to an input? Or how sensitive is my animal to a certain experimental condition? Because then what you could do is you can test above threshold, so you make it more louder or more vivid, and you see, well, what happens to the behavior or what happens to the, the uh, firing of a nerve or some neuromuscular junction potential or something like that as you go below and above threshold. Okay, These are very common experiments and they date all the way back to I think about 1860 or 1870 where a German bloke called Gustav Fechner um, started to look in detail at these sorts of experiments. How does the perception of a sound or a stimulus change with the intensity of the stimulus. So, that's what we're going to do. PsychoPy, Python, all these other libraries, we'll go through them in this video series. Now, uh, we're going to answer that question, do psychophysics experiment. Now, if you have looked at my other uh, playlist before, then you can probably jump ahead and go, th go, uh, and go where you want to start basically. If you're new to the way that I design my experiments and the way that I uh, make these videos and my workflow, then stick around. We'll try and keep this quite a short introductory video and we'll go through the sort of things that you're going to need to follow along at home. Okay, so what are we going to need? We're going to need, um, in this case, our Python, some libraries that we're going to import into Python, and we're going to need a computer. So I'm running this on uh, Windows 10. It's a it's a Dell laptop from, I don't know, 1400s or something like that. But I've managed to get these experiments working on Mac OS X, and I've also got uh, Raspberry Pi and some other Linux distros, and I've had variable success getting this stuff to work on those other platforms. Definitely Mac OS X. Now, in these videos, I have the command prompt. Let me go across here. I have the command prompt here in the left hand side. So please make sure that you're familiar with how to uh, interact with your command prompt. Terminal is uh, the an analogous thing in your Mac for Macs. And we've also got this program here on the right hand side here. It's called Atom. Now, Atom is the text editor that I use to basically write the code for my experiment. So where do we get it from? So it's https.atom.io. Right? It's free to download, free to use. Um, it's quite straightforward to use. Plenty of tutorials out there how to use it. Um, look, you can write your program using Notepad or Microsoft Word. doesn't matter. Uh, there are some advantages to using Atom. Okay, so this is what we're going to use. I'm going to use is Atom, the text editor editor called Adam. Now the other thing that we're going to use is Python which is the programming language that we're going to write our experiment in. So um, make sure that you can get Python so if we go um, python.org um, we're going to use Python uh, 3 
So if we go to downloads, it's currently at uh, Python 3.7.3. So if you download that for Windows, um, it should be fairly straightforward to get that up and running for you. We're not going to go through the idle, which is the integrated development environment, I think it is. We're going to write a file in the Python language, okay, in Atom. We're going to save that to our hard drive, and then we're going to use our command prompt to open and run that file using the Python interpreter, okay? So uh, get Python. Now, the big library that you're going to need is called PsychoPy. So they're now uh, psychopy.org. All this should be in the text uh, underneath in the video description. Get PsychoPy. Now, there's two ways that you can use PsychoPy. One is to use the standalone program that they have. The other is to install the dependencies, the libraries and the dependencies, um, and then link it into your um, Python uh, Python 3 uh, site packages and library and all that stuff. Um, I do the latter. So I've done what's called the manual install using pip. Okay, so if you're not sure what pip is, um, have a look for some uh, YouTube videos and tutorials on how to use pip, P-I-P, which I think is the Python install package manager or something like that. So anyway, so if you go here, um, if you go into your command prompt and you basically cut and paste all this, now this says pip, P-I-P at the start. If you're on Mac OS X, it comes, or Linux, it comes with a, I think a Python 2 distro already. So you're going to have to change pip to then say pip3, because you want it into your Python 3 uh, install. So get all these guys on board. Now I've had some problems with EGI and IO labs getting them working. We don't need those, because I think they're for response boxes and third party software. Um, so you should be able to get around without without having those two here. Uh, we might use Arduino later on, so you will need Pi Serial that opens up serial communication. Um, we don't do any parallel port stuff, but um, bring it in anyway, just in case. All right? You'll also need to install um, Pi PWin32, um, or just go to town. Get as much of this stuff in as you can, because if you're going to use Python in the future, you may need it later on. Okay, so we've got PsychoPy, we've got Python, we've got the command prompt, we've got the Atom text editor. So what else do we need? So I've gone through that, I've gone through that. Okay, um, we're also going to use a thing called Pandas, which is a library which is for data science and data structures. That comes in, you'll see Pandas here is in your installation for Python already. So on the top line here, you see one, one, two, three, the fourth one in is pandas. So we'll, we will get that up on board as well. That's what we're going to use to save our files and basically structure our data and our response data from our subjects. So we need pandas. And we're also going to use very standard libraries like date, time, wave, OS, and things like that, just to do some very low level things. Uh, you'll also need Pi Audio, and you'll also need to get wave. So check to see if you've got them all up and running. How do you do that? Just very quickly. I'm in my command prompt on the left here. Okay, um, I'm going to type Python and we're actually in the Python uh, program now, essentially, the interpreter or the IDE, I guess it is. Um, I'm running 3.6.5. Okay, it's a bit of an older version, but it still works. So I want to see if I have access to the wave library. So I'm going to write import wave. No error messages has come up, have come up, which means I have access and I've imported the wave library. Now, if you come up with an error message, like an exception module not found, that means you haven't got access to it. So you're going to have to go to your command prompt and type pip install wave or install the missing library. Okay. So we can also check to see if we've got psychopy. Yep, we've got psychopy and we can import pandas as well and import OS and oh we're starting to write a python program here we'll get out of that using exit so now we're just into the command prompt here is the file that i've written that we will write our program with and i've called it psychometric and i've saved it as a .py extension this is important because windows on a windows machine it looks to the extension to see how do i deal with this program if it finds a py extension it will use the python interpreter so how do we run this? My command prompt is in the current folder where I've saved the psychometric.py file. So all I need to do is type Python psycho 
psychometric.py. It's then got that file, interpreted it, ran it, and we've got the output here. It says debug colon hello world. And that's what I've written here. Print debug hello world. This here is a multi-line comment. I'm not going to go through the basics on how to write Python code here. Um, there are plenty of, um, plenty of other video tutorials out there for you to look at. So we're going to assume quite a basic uh, knowledge of Python. The, th the final thing that I want to talk about here is we're going to make our sound stimuli using a program called Audacity. It's a free program. So if we go to Audacity here, A-U-D-A-C-R-T-Y, Audacity, um, we're going to create our sound stimuli using this and save it as a WAV file. We're going to go through that in our next video. So I'll leave this video here and I look forward to, you know, making some experiments with you. Um, so let's get cracking. I'll see you in the next video.